I start this episode on a bittersweet note, as it's the last week of Potter Month. We've had some laughs, we've shed some tears, we've told some puns. But it's time to finish this the way we started. Together. It's Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 versus Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 on Movie Feuds. Everything has led up to these last two installments. Some consider it could have been one, but I welcome the split into two. It's more time with the characters and whew, what a time it's been. This phenomenal cast is in top form in the final installments. We get to see a lot of old faces return, from the Dursleys to the Malfoys. Our three teenagers get more time than ever on screen, especially in the first half. Emma, Daniel, Rupert, they've owned these roles by this point, and now they're just showing off. Watson typically gets all the praise, for good reason, but Radcliffe really sells the struggles Harry is going through, and I refuse to believe anyone could have done a better job. Ralph finds his Voldemort finally gets more time in the spotlight, and there's always this weird chill in the air whenever he's around. It helps that he's got his crazy as hell sidekicks, Greyback and Lestrange at his side. And then there's Snape. Poor, 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 Snape. The guy's just stuck in the middle. He's Malcolm in, in the middle. And his story is one of the most tragically told that I've ever read. To be fair, I've only read about 20 books in my life, so... What I love most is all these characters that we've grown up with through the course of the books and the films get one more time to shine. McGonagall gets to set up Hogwarts and tell off Snape. Miss Weasley takes down that bitch Bellatrix. Hagrid holds his best friend Harry's lifeless body in his arms, and Dumbledore passes on some words of wisdom. Harry's family stays by his side in his darkest hour via Resurrection Stone, and Hedwig, that beautiful creature, that magnificent owl, gives up his life for Harry. Then there's Dobby, who saves Harry at the Malfoy house before meeting his ultimate demise. Tonks and Lupin go down swinging, Fred and George fight side by side one last time. <laughs> no, no, no. Why? Let's take a moment to celebrate our fallen heroes. Uh, and I think the most proper way to do that is with the Queen of Canada, Celine Dion. Take us home. For all those times you stood by me, for all the truth that you made me for all you brought to my life For all the wrong that you made right For every dream you made come true For all the love <laughs> On a serious note, I applaud J.K. Rowling for going that extra step in the final installment and not copying out. <laughs> Technically speaking, this is one story, but for the sake of the feud, let's talk about which segment's stronger. Deathly Hollows Part 1 to some people is a two and a half hour camping trip. To others such as myself, it's a story of survival and uncertainty. It's also a story of friendship more than ever before. Harry, Ron, and Hermione are off on their own for the first time. They need to lean on each other, and sometimes that's not easy. There's also no question that Part 2 is basically a non-stop action fest, complete with an escape from Gringotts via Dragon, a large-scale battle at Hogwarts, and the final fight with Voldemort. I'm very certain Part 2 is going to win this feud by a landslide, but I'm not sure it's fair. I personally like the pacing of Part 1, wow that was a lot of peas, better as there was more variety from the crazy escape from the Dursley's house to a polyjuice operation at the Ministry of Magic complete with a stupefied blast to Umbridge's face. Seriously though, Harry, just learn another goddamn spell besides stupefy. Then there's the forest chase, Horcrux porn, and the fight at the Malfoy house. I'm not saying there's no variety in part two. We have that kick-ass animation to open things up, explaining what the Deathly Hollows are. And we get a fire chase between Draco and his dipshit allies. We also get to see the truth behind Snape's struggles all these years later via a teardrop into a pensive. I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit let down by the scope of the final battle, although I don't think it was ever gonna hit the level of epicness I wanted. But I do get what JK was going for. We already have the large scale battles with Lord of the Rings. This was a much more contained story, and it began at Hogwarts, and that's where it ended. David Yates finds the perfect balance between Order of the Phoenix and the Half-Blood Prince in these last two films. There's definitely more magic, but it's set in a more practical environment. 
You really feel like these spells are being cast since he doesn't go over the top with them. It's not a CGI nightmare like Transformers, although it easily could have been. Thankfully, David Yates has a keener eye. There are a lot of very picturesque shots, particularly in part one, when we see our heroes in the woods. I love his use of both frantic camera work during faster battles to the steady, clean technique during more personalized ones. The CGI has come a long way since that bathroom troll from the first flick. Creature and Dobby are borderline lifelike, and Nagini made me realize I never wanted to take a lawnmower over a snake more in my life. A clever polyjuice scene, dragon riding, school dueling, horcrux destroying, wedding crashing, and almost non-stop excitement in the final hour make these the best Potter films to watch for your action fix! Looking back on the sheer amounts of talent in these pictures can be overwhelming at times. Everyone from the makeup, costumes, stagehands, orchestra, actors, directors, and I assume craft service providers has done a tremendous job. It's even more impressive considering that these movies have changed hands so many times in both the directing and composing departments. Award-winning composer Alexander Dusplat, a name who I always butcher, has been handed over the wand for these final two acts. And he doesn't disappoint. Mm -mm -mm. Hedwig's theme is brought back and sounds better than ever. It's given a more distressed, almost broken sound to reflect the state of things. I've stated in the past that I love the inclusion of the dance scene between Harry and Hermione in part one. A wonderful song by Nick Cave was selected by director David Yates after listening to over 300 tunes to get it just right. Harry and Hermione have lost pretty much everything at this point, from family to friends, and they have only each other to lean on. It's a platonic love, and I think I speak on behalf of everyone when I say, that's some bullshit. And Harry's the complete package, he's the real deal, and Hermione, <laughs> just don't get me started on her, she's a catch! She's a catch. J.K. Rollins has gone on record and stated, she done f***ed up. She done f***ed up. Harry and Hermione, that was where it was at. What am I even talking about anymore? Oh yes, music. Part 1 and Part 2 won multiple awards for their music. Alexander hits all the right notes at all the right times. It's the perfect end to complement a perfect beginning. Left me. It pains me to say this, but Potter Month as we know it is over. Now? 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 That doesn't mean I can't talk about more Harry Potter in the future. I'm, I will find any excuse I can to feud it against something else. And believe me, there's plenty more to say. These are templates for a deeper discussion, as I barely scratch the surface of all the brilliant highlights the franchise offers. Which reminds me, if you are not fortunate enough to own these movies, especially on Blu-ray, you come to the right place. This giveaway is still going on, it's been going on since the beginning of the month. Comment below and subscribe, and you, your name's thrown in. You have a chance to win the whole kit and caboodle, as the kids say. I'm not going to go into more details, you can find them in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube. J.K. Rollins has created an amazing world for us to escape into and Warner Brothers gave it the proper resources needed to become movies that live up to the name. There are plenty of amazing books and films out there, and then there's Harry Potter. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. Avada Kedavra! I just killed my audience.